God's plan, someone stop me. I've been sent here from Illuminati. Evil scriptures written on my body. Me What's up, guys? Hope everyone's having a good 2019 so far. I had a bit of a rough January just because I had to move out of my old apartment. The landlord didn't send me my security deposit on time, so I had to ask my parents to help me pay for my new one, and that was... I hate doing that. Just a lot of bullshit with moving and yada yada, but now I'm here. I have a much bigger apartment now. By much bigger, I mean like twice as big as my tiny ass old apartment. Things are a lot more comfortable here. I still do not have Twitter. She's in Charlotte with my family, though I am going back to Charlotte, so anyone who is watching this who knows me from home, I will be back in Charlotte from February 27th through March 4th. Yeah, March 4th. So this video is going to be just a little discussion of what my 2019 goals are so I can kind of put those out there, give me a little bit of motivation to actually go through with them. There's four main goals. I'm going to go over what they are and what I plan on doing to achieve them because if you have a goal and you're not really sure what the steps are to achieve that goal, it's going to be a lot harder for you to reach that goal. So I'm going to go through what I will be doing to reach the goals that I have set for myself. That was very choppy. Anywho, let's get right into it. First and foremost, this is like the first goal I set for myself this year. I want to make six-figure income this year. Obviously be making 100,000 or more. I did not make anywhere near that last year. I probably made around like 40,000. That's just my guess. I haven't done my taxes yet. We'll know an exact number soon. I don't think I'll be sharing it regardless, but Somewhere around there, I didn't make very much last year because I was still doing my tutoring and I wasn't doing that full time because I was spending a lot of my time working to make video my full time job and trying to find clients and building up my portfolio, but I'm in a much better spot now. I am making a lot more money from the videos I am doing and I'm a lot better at making videos than I was at the beginning of 2018, which is a big reason why I'm making more money than I was early last year. After January, I'm not on pace to make six figures this year, but January was, again, a pretty shitty month for me. I, things are good now, but I'm still working with a lot of smaller artists and smaller budgets, but I do believe I have some big opportunities coming up in the near future. So my plan for that is the steps I'm going to take are to increase the quality of my videos in every aspect possible. Color correction specifically is something that I want to continue improving on. I, I saw a lot of improvement last year with my color correction and color grading. And also putting out videos that are more meaningful and cinematic. The last video I did was actually, it's for a Christian rapper back home that I knew from work. I used to work at Chick-fil-A my early years in college and my late years in high school. We did a music video about his like inner struggles with his demons and I know how to do a lot of effects that make people look evil and demonic. So we utilized that to make that video more meaningful. I've done a lot of music videos in the past where it's just a bunch of eye candy, stuff that looks visually appealing for really no reason. I want to make videos that are more meaningful and cinematic. That should make it easier for me to increase my prices. Another thing I want to be able to do with video this year is build a wedding and engagement portfolio. For those of you who are not videographers, is this fan loud? I assume I'm much louder than the fan, so I'll, I'll turn off the fan. I'm kind of hot, but whatever. So with weddings, if you're a good wedding videographer, you can charge upwards of like 5,000, 6,000. I know people who charge like $10,000 for wedding videos. Yeah, I, I live right next to Beverly Hills. It probably wouldn't be that difficult to find clients for that. I just need a portfolio and I need to make sure I'm doing really, really badass wedding videos, like good wedding videos. So that's one of my goals this year is to build a wedding portfolio. It's a lot easier to charge more for wedding videos. People they want quality content there and they're willing to pay for that. When you're working with hip hop artists primarily, most of my, midi bleh, most of my music videos are hip hop videos. A lot of hip hop artists slash artists in general are just poor, broke. I do like working with those artists. I love doing music videos. It's just when it comes to my income, wedding videos is probably a better use of my time. Over the past like eight months that I've been doing video full time, my income has gradually been increasing. So I do expect that to continue in 2019. Now my second goal 
which actually will work synergistically with my first goal, is to get my brokerage account up to $25,000, hoping to get it much higher than that. But I only put $1,000 in. If you don't know what a brokerage account, it's um, an account you open to trade stocks. So I've been reading up on trading stocks. I've been experimenting with the market, trying to be as safe as possible and as conservative as I could possibly be, because the reason why a lot of people fail at trading stocks is one, they are greedy, or two, they're fearful and they trade with emotion. So you kind of have to separate that money from like, you don't want to use any money that is money you need because you're going to trade improperly because you'll be scared of losing that money and just, yeah, uh, I've been reading up on it. I've been learning all the indicators, moving averages, and how to predict when stocks are going to go up or down. Of course, there's a factor of randomness that is unpredictable, but a lot of it is actually a lot more predictable than you would realize. I've been trading on the app Robinhood, which I hate right now. <laughs> I'm using it currently because I don't have enough principal in my account to justify a commission every time I make a trade or like a commission fee that I would have to pay every time I make a trade. Robinhood does free trades, it's a mobile app. But what I always heard on YouTube when I was looking up videos and tutorials on how to trade is that Robinhood has shitty customer service. Lo and behold, I had a pretty shitty experience with customer service like two days ago. What happened was I bought a strangle option spread on two different stocks. There were several reasons why I shouldn't have done that. It was a trade that I shouldn't have gotten into in the first place, So, and I know why now. There's a lot of mistakes you're going to learn trading stocks, and I'm just constantly learning. As you make those mistakes, you learn what you shouldn't do. Everyone who trades stocks at first is going to lose money. That's part of it. Luckily, I haven't lost that much, but this past week I made two bad trades. So I was going to lose about 300 bucks, like cool, 300 bucks. That's not that much when it comes to trading stocks, like people lose thousands all the time. However, Robinhood went down for an entire hour, so I couldn't cut my losses at 300 bucks. I, I was sitting there trying to get rid of these trades that I had picked up or these option contracts that I had picked up with a loss of $300, which sucks, but you have to cut losses if your trades are going the wrong way. I attempted to do that, but the app went down for an entire hour, which is so long. A lot can happen in an hour in the stock market. So that hour put me in a position where I was losing $600 and I contacted customer service. I was like, this is bullshit. Something should be done. Maybe you could like upgrade my account to a gold account. Really, I want compensation for that. Just something. They just kept sending me copy and paste messages and we got nowhere. I've I've gotten like five messages that were clearly copy and paste bullshit that weren't really addressing what I had said. They were just like, we're not offering compensation for this because there were people all over Reddit and all over um, Down Detector, which is a website that tells you when websites are down. There were complaints all over both of those and people demanding their money back. And of course the app is gonna be like, we don't wanna do that. And the people on Robinhood aren't huge investors. It's people getting started. So nobody's gonna have enough money to sue or do anything. So they're just kind of sliding under the table with that. Fuck Robinhood, I'm getting off of it as soon as possible. As soon as I build my account up more, I'm withdrawing it all and putting it into probably a TD Ameritrade brokerage account. Back to what I'm doing with that. I had steadily built up my account from $1,000 to $1,500. Then I had that $600 loss, and now I'm just building it back up to where I started, and we're gonna take it slow and build it back up all the way to 25,000 ideally. It gets faster and faster the larger your account is, just because you can take larger positions. But the reason why I'm saying 25,000 is because once I hit 25,000, I can day trade, which is something I would like to do for a large, part of my income. Almost every day trade I've made to this day, I've made a net profit on. Day trading, just like, it's really simple to me and all the indicators and such that I use click. It's a little harder for me to predict swing trades, but I've been sticking to a lot of swing trades at the moment. So if I can accomplish that, that's gonna be another thing that aids me getting to six figure income this year. I'm pretty confident that I will be able to achieve that because I'm positive on almost every trade. I just made that one big mistake which got amplified by 
the app crashing. I made a couple other mistakes, but nothing anywhere close to that. I've done a pretty good job at being conservative. And of course I get risky one day <laughs> and it bites me in the ass. So yeah, I, I'll keep you guys updated on that because I see a lot of potential in the stock market when it comes to long-term income. As long as I can figure out the patterns and understand them, as long as anybody can do that, you can make a lot of money in the stock market. And if you can become good at that, you're pretty much set for life when it comes to finances. So. That's something I want to figure out this year and become good at. Third thing, I don't really have many fitness goals per se, but my goal this year when it comes to health is to eat better, like eat clean, because last year I spent no time dieting, just ate whatever I wanted. It's kind of hard to focus on your fitness and nutrition. Like I wasn't even on a fitness program or workout program all of 2018, but it's kind of hard to do that when you're trying to build a business from the ground up. Like I, I went full time doing video in May and had to make sure I was making enough money to pay all my bills and pay my student loans and such. That's where all of my time and energy went. Now that I'm in a better spot financially, I can start focusing on my health and fitness again. Not to mention this year I do have a kitchen which has helped so much when it comes to staying good with my diet. And I'm not tracking macros. I'm not like counting calories or like really dieting. I would like to lose about 10, 15 pounds. I'm down about five pounds so far, just eating better. Eating clean, it's incredibly easy for me to lose weight because I'd have to eat like 3,500 calories a day to s start gaining weight. And that's really easy for me when I'm eating shitty food, but when I'm eating clean food, that's incredibly hard. So I just tend to lean down if I can stick to a cleaner diet. That's one thing I wanna do this year and just, cause it's like, I'm starting to get, I'm not old, I, I'm, I'm still, I'm fucking young, but I'm getting older. I'm about to turn 25 this year. Oh, that sounds so, sounds so shitty. I want to make health a priority in my life instead of just being like, oh, I'm gonna eat donuts every day and those are my carb source. I wanna be a healthy adult and I also want to lean down. I'm in California. I haven't even been to the beaches. I've been to the beaches. I haven't like actually gone on the beaches and swam or anything. I was actually too busy all last year anyway to do that. But this year I would like to actually get leaner, get more fit and get back to like my roots when it comes to fitness because I started fitness to get lean and look better and I kind of let myself go last year so I would like to get fit again. I guess you could say I'm fit. I'm just not lean. I haven't been training to look good but I'm doing more of bodybuilding stuff instead of like strength stuff at the moment and eating better so that's goal number three. Goal number four is something that I really neglected last year and that is stress management. I worked myself into the ground last year and I was motivated to do so because I was like, I have to be able to make enough to pay my bills and such. I was starting a new business. I didn't know what I was doing. I was just doing, busting my ass, reaching out to clients on my own. Now most of my clients reach out to me, which makes life so much easier, the marketing portion of making videos. But I was so busy working every single day last year, almost, not every single day, but most days I would be at my computer editing videos if I wasn't out filming them. And I would wake up at like 6 a.m. and I would be editing till like 10 or 11 p.m. The only breaks I would take would be to eat and to go to the gym and that was incredibly stressful and I feel like I would be more efficient with that time I was using to work if I was in a better headspace and not as stressed. So I'm limiting the amount of time I work this year. Instead of waking up and working until I go to bed, I wake up, do my work, and then like take the rest of the day off. So I, I typically try to work at least seven or eight hours a day. I, I work more of a normal work day now. And it's helped so much with stress management instead of being like, oh, I need to get this done today. It's like, I'm gonna bust my ass for this long. And then if I don't finish it today, I'll finish it tomorrow. Because I don't, I don't, I usually don't have hard deadlines on videos. Sometimes I do, but yeah, it's, it's a lot better for me mentally to just like work a set amount of time and then relax for the rest of the day. And then the next day I'm ready to go. That said, I actually have a TV now. I showed that in my last vlog, but that TV was not big enough. So I actually got rid of that. And here, let me show you guys. That's the new TV. It's a 49 inch. It's a lot bigger. It's a Roku so I can watch Netflix. That's another thing I've been actually like watching shows, which I find like educational in a way since I, I do video. The other thing I did was I picked up this Xbox One 
and got Kingdom Hearts 3 and it's badass so far. I'm having a great time playing it. But yeah, just some stuff I can do at the end of the day after I've done all my work to kick back and relax because it actually really helps keep my mental health in a good spot. It keeps anxiety down. We does that too. I actually have a, a pen that I use pretty much every night at this point, but it's a CBD heavy pen, so it doesn't really get me high so much as it just makes me like relaxed and calms my stress. I highly recommend. It does have some THC in it, but it's very a very small amount compared to the CBD. CBD is something I highly recommend to like anyone who does anything similar to what I do. It's incredible for stress management. But yeah, just keeping my stress down has just made like these past couple weeks so much more chill outside of the fact that my past landlord was an asshole and Robin Hood sucked for like a day. But besides that, things have been great. I just wish I had my dog. I will have her at the end of this month though. So yeah, that's actually like it for this video. It was only those four goals. They're kind of big goals, I feel, but it's all stuff that I'm capable of and they all kind of work together to just like increase my quality of life and just like increase my quality of business, increase my success. It's like it covers like my financial goals, my health and fitness goals, and just like life goals. So yeah, that's it for the video guys. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments down below. I do want to start posting tutorials and more helpful videos for those of you who are video creators, because I know I do incorporate some things in videos that I get asked a lot of questions about on Instagram. If you're not following me there, it's at Drew Kosak. It's just my name. So I do plan on doing that. I do want to make some more short films this year. Oh, I guess YouTube is a is kind of a goal. It's it's not at the forefront of my goals right now, but I do want to start posting more on here. So thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe and I will see you guys in the next video.